Okay, we're gonna power through. I'm just gonna continue and uh, upload the second episode right away. Wow, episode. Uh, kaya pa naman. Kaya pa naman. Uh, gusto ko siyang habulin so that uh, when I make these videos, nasa timeline ko siya ang pag-aaral ko. Para nagkakoonside. Okay, so characteristics of criminal law. There are three characteristics of criminal law. First is that it's general, second is territorial, and third it's perspective. So very important. Uh, general, so generality principle basically says that penal laws and those of public security and safety shall be obligatory upon all who live and sojourn in the Philippine territory subject to the principles of public international law and to treaty stipulations. So yung keywords dito is, first, penal laws, or all laws or statutes that involve public security and safety. This shall be applicable and is obligatory, meaning mandatory, sa lahat nang nakatira sa Pilipinas and hindi lang nakatira sa Pilipinas as in like the citizens and the residents but also those visitors who stay here even if they're not Filipinos. So aliens for example. Alien is a term used for foreigners. Um, so yon nag apply sa kanila. However, there is an exception and that is um, the principles of public international law and treaty stipulations. So kailangan i-consider yon um, bakit important yung last line? It's because yung general rule, lahat ng nasa territory ng Philippines subject sa penal laws natin and laws involving public security and safety. Pero may exceptions. So, what are the exceptions? So, the first exception is the universally accepted principles of public international law. So, exempted sa generality principle o sa applicability ng penal laws sa lahat, yung mga sovereigns. So, who are sovereigns? Um, heads of state, like president, if presidents, if presidential yung system of government nila. Could be the prime minister. Could be the king or queen if it's a monarchy. It's a sovereign. Like the ruler, quote-unquote. The representative of the state. Okay? Pero sovereign is a term usually sa monarchy. Mga king, queen, gano'n. Heads of state. So, yan. Isang category sila yan. Heads of state, as mentioned, like your president, your prime minister, the leader of the nation. Uh, other persons that are also exempt from this generality principle are ambassadors. Charge, charge the affairs. Di ko alam kung paano i-pronounce. Basta yun. Ministers, minister residents, plenipotentiary, and other representatives accredited to host heads of the state, minister, minister's resident. So, yung mga taong to, uh, hindi naman sila immune talaga sa everything, no? Pero, exception sila sa rule na lahat ng tao na nandito sa territory ng Philippines subject sa criminal law natin. So, kahit nandito sila, may, exception, may exemptions sa kanila. And the second exception is or are treaty, treaties and treaty stipulations. So, merong exception to the exception. So, hindi exempt by virtue of principal, uh, principles of public international law, yung consuls, vice consuls, and other commercial representatives of foreign nations who do not possess such status and cannot claim the privileges and immunities accorded to ambassadors and ministers. Okay. So, ano pang kailangan natin malaman dito? Yung vice president, immune ba siya? Actually, no. Kasi hindi siya head of state. The vice president is not immune from criminal prosecution. The job of the vice president kasi, unlike the head of the executive department, does not demand 
uh, you know, undivided attention and representing the state. Hence, um, the circumstance in which the presidential immunity is based is, you know, dahil nga nila representing state. Okay? So later we will discuss other uh, doctrines like um, immunity from suit ng state. Uh, blanket diplomatic immunity. So diplomatic representatives such as ambassadors or public ministers in their official routine, nota official routine, possess immunity from criminal jurisdiction of the country kung saan sila nagsistay. They cannot be sued, they cannot be arrested, and they cannot be, of course, punished by the law of that country. Kasi nga, exempted sila sa generality principle. Diplomatic immunity only applies when the diplomatic officer is engaged in the performance of his official functions. So this is very important kasi ito yung magiging exception to the exception mo. Kasi possible na isa siya sa inenumerate kanina na exempted by virtue of the generality principle. However, yung actions niya is not pursuant to his official duties. Therefore, liable pa rin siya. Ganon. The main yardstick in ascertaining whether a person is a diplomat entitled to immunity is the determination of whether or not he performs duties of diplomatic nature. Consuls do not ordinarily enjoy the traditional diplomatic immunities and privileged privileges accorded to diplomats, mainly because they are not charged with the duty of representing their states, pretty much like the vice president diba? in political matters. However, consular officers are immune from criminal prosecution of acts performed in the exercise of their functions. So, ito na. Ito yung sinasabi ko kaninang state immunity. The state may not be sued without its consent. Again, this is a political law topic. You know? Pero nag-overlap, overlap naman yun. A sovereign is exempt from suit. Okay? Pati yung mga iba doon, like the heads of state. Not because of any formal conception or obsolete theory, but on the logical and practical ground that there can be no legal right as against the authority that makes the law on which the right depends. Okay. Ano rin yan eh? Um, hindi lang yan sa ganyang reason. Um, since patas yung state, so international law na to, no state is more important than the other. They are on equal ground. Therefore, the state cannot impose its laws against another state. Parang ganun. Kasi, who are you to impose your laws sa akin na parehas lang naman tayo? Diba? So, kapag representative ka ng isang, kapag representative siya ng isang state, hindi pwedeng basta-basta lang siyang kasuhan, especially if official functions niya. Kasi, you know, the state is not a concrete concept. It's composed of the people. It's represented by its government. It's represented by its people. It's represented by the leaders of their nation. Nation is an ethnic concept. Basically, uh, the representatives of such state. Therefore, to prosecute the representatives of such state, parang pinaprosecute na yung buong state. Parang gano'n. And the Philippines doesn't have the right to do that. Neither do other countries have the right to do that sa, Filip- sa Republic of the Philippines and its representatives. Diba? The doctrine of immunity from suits is not applicable if the public official is charged in his official capacity for acts that are unauthorized or unlawful and injurious to the rights of others. Neither does it apply where the public official is clearly being sued not in his official capacity, but in his personal capacity. Although the acts complained of may have been committed while he occupied a public position, 
So the fact that you are holding the public position doesn't mean that you're just immune. Uh, dapat, to be immune, you're exercising public official functions. Uh, just being the holder of the office does not give you immunity. Um, the, the courts will still look into your acts diba? if related siya sa public function mo. If hindi, if you committed something uh, because of, if you committed something na personal act, then you may be held liable. Hindi ka magiging exempt kahit may generality principle. Hindi ka magiging exempt sa generality principle. So, rules on criminal jurisdiction. Philippine authorities shall have jurisdiction over U.S. personnel with respect to the offenses committed within the Philippines and punishable under the law of the Philippines. May mga... Yung Philippines kasi has U.S. ties. Di ba? Meron nga mga U.S. military bases dito. Dati. Ewan ko kung meron pa rin nandang ngayon. So, applicable pa rin kahit, kahit nandito sila, kahit official function, titignan mo pa rin yung nature of their actions. U.S. military authorities shall have the right to exercise within the Philippines all criminally. However, ito ah, uh, U.S. military authorities shall have the right to exercise within the Philippines all criminal and disciplinary jurisdiction conferred on them by the military of the U.S. over U.S. personnel in the Philippines. So, ito naman, di ba nga merong military bases dito? Yung U.S. with regard sa military personnel nila or U.S. personnel or personnel employees or tauhan ng, ng United States of America. Hindi, may mga pinipirmahan kasi niyan silang mga agreements, like treaties, ganyan, na hindi na wini wave ni Philippines yung right niya to prosecute sa sarili niyang soil yung mga to di ba so merong mga ganong agreements and in honor natin yan laws of preferential application section 11 of article 6 of the 1987 constitution grants immunity from prosecution to congressmen and senators from all offenses not punishable by more than six years imprisonment while Congress is in session. So, kahit sa mga sarili nating senador, sa sarili nating congressmen, okay, hindi sila pwedeng i-prosecute. Exempted din sila dun sa generality principle kapag Congress is in session and if the crimes are not punishable by more than six years imprisonment. If hindi ma-meet yung requirement na to, like for example, not in session, and or, and or, yung crime punishable by uh, imprisonment of more than six years, then pwede pa rin silang i-prosecute. However, no member of Congress shall be held liable in any other place for any speech or debate in Congress or in any committee thereof. So, nasa constitution to. And as mentioned, the Constitution is the fundamental law of the land. Nandito yung Constitution, nandito lang yung RPC. PD number 1083. So under Article 180 of the said Presidential Decree, penal laws relative to the crime of bigamy shall not apply to a person married under Muslim law, where the requirements set therein are met. So, Yung Muslims, alam natin na pwede silang magkaroon ng uh, multiple wives, di ba? And pero mga requirements din sila. So, nare-respect din natin yan kasi long-standing tradition nila yan eh. So, we cannot uh, apply, you know, the our laws against bigamy and it prosecute sila sa bigamy or polygamy wala namang polygamy kasi um, matik na yan eh, second pa lang so regardless my third or fourth ka you will be criminally liable so hindi natin pwedeng i-apply sa ating mga Muslim brothers and sisters if the marriage is not solemnized however in accordance with Muslim law the accused cannot claim criminal exemption from liability for bigamy on the basis of his religious belief as a Muslim because of the generality principle so dapat namimit din nila yung requirements nila dun sa Sharia law 
I'm not sure if Sherry and Loyal got returned. But yeah. Ari number 75 penalizes acts which would impair the proper observance by the Republic and inhabitants of the Philippines of the immunities, rights, and privileges of duly accredited foreign diplomatic representatives in the Philippines. So, di ba, may mention tayo kaninang mga uh, taong exempted sa generality principle. So, the authorities uh, will be penalized if they violate that or if they don't respect the diplomatic immunity afforded to the persons mentioned earlier. Okay. So, ayun. It's not just a no criminal prosecution or arrest, no? Or imprisonment, but also their properties cannot be uh, subjected to distraint, seizure, and attachment. Ambassadors or public ministers of any foreign state authorized and received as such by the president are also exempted and any domestic servant okay wait now i'm gonna edit the title so let's go any domestic servant of any such ambassador or minister provided that the foreign state provides similar protection to philippine diplomatic representatives so exempted then yung mga uh tauhan ng mga ambassadors or ministers or uh, heads of state or sovereigns provided that um, in their country they also uh, they also treat yung said servants and employees of our ambassador our ministers our head of state you know, sovereign there is an exception if the writ or process sued out of out or prosecuted is against a person who is a citizen or inhabitant of the Philippines provided the person is in the service of an ambassador or a public minister and process is founded upon a debt contracted before he entered upon such service. Okay. So against the domestic servant of an ambassador or public minister provided that the name of the servant has been registered in the DFA and transmitted by the Secretary of Foreign Affairs to the Chief of Police of the City of Manila, but the registration was only made after the writ or process has been issued or commenced. So, pinaparegister din yung mga to. Para, syempre, alam din ng, ng ating kapulisan kung sino yung pwede nilang i-arrest or hindi or else magiging liable sila sa violation of RA number 75, diba? Okay, so let's discuss this case of Minisher versus Scalzo. Ano to eh, um, ano lang, yung doctrine lang ng diplomatic immunity na discuss natin dito. Basically, si Minisher, ano siya, uh, Iranian na uh, wanted sa buong mundo for drugs. So, nagkaroon ng, yung ginawa ng US is uh, nagpadala sila ng mga tao dito para pulihin tong si Minisher. So, isa dun si Scalzo. And, uh, nag-coordinate yung US with our police and our drug, drug enforcement agency dito sa Pilipinas para i-entrap or by bus operation yun. para mag-conduct ng by bus operation para mahuli si Minisure, Minisure na nagtatago dito sa Pilipinas. So, yung naging issue dito, so nahuli nga, ganun. So, yung naging issue dito is tinasuhan din ni Minisure si, or parang in ni Minisure na si Scalzo mali mali yung ginawa niya na involved siya doon. And, uh, dapat liable siya. Tapos, may mga irregularities siyang in alleged doon sa by operation na parang basically making Scalzo liable for his actions. 
dun sa kinu-question niyang by bus stop permission. And sabi naman ng Supreme Court, well, sabi ni Scalzo, well, can't prosecute me kasi meron akong diplomatic immunity. So, yun question is, um, entitled nga ba si Scalzo for diplomatic immunity? And the, the, ano, the Supreme Court ruled that, well, si Scalzo sa position niya, no, na special agent ng U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, hindi siya kasama dun sa exclusive list mentioned earlier ng mga exempted sa penal laws natin dito sa Pilipinas. So, exclusive yon. However, hindi pa rin siya pinrosecute. Bakit? Kasi, um, si Scalzo, parang siya yung representative ng US. Eh. So, yung actions ni Scalzo, actions yun ng US. He was acting within the orders of the United States of America. Uh, tinas siya ng U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency to conduct surveillance. Tapos makipag-coordinate sa uh, Drug Enforcement Agency din natin dito at sa Philippine government para nga magawa itong bypass operation and makuli si Minasher. Diba? So, nag-consent yung Philippine government tapos merong mga communications sa US between US and the Philippines regarding this and dahil doon yung in-invoke dito ni Scalzo is not the blanket diplomatic immunity which he's not entitled but rather uh, immunity from suit ng state Um, he was not acting kasi in his private and per- personal capacity. He was acting sa directives of the sending state, which is the United States of America. So again, state immunity from suit. Diba? Okay. Itong Liang versus people. Okay. Ayun ang nangyari naman dito, si Liang ano siya, um, emplo- employee siya, okay, economist siya sa ADB, Asian Development Bank. Yung Asian Development Bank at yung Pilipinas, parang nag-enter into agreement na um, may immunity yung mga employees nila. So, si Liang nag-utter ng defamatory words to a certain individual named Joyce Cabal. Okay? So, clerical staff member din siya ng ADB dito sa Pilipinas. Sabi ni Liang, immune siya. Sabi ng DFA, yes, immune nga yan. Parang ganun. So, bawal kasuhan. Then again, the Supreme Court said, liable pa yun si Liang. Bakit? Hindi sinasabing ano, hindi nare-recognize yung agreement ng Philippines with the ADB, no? But, uttering defamatory words is not an exercise of official functions, ba? Diba? So, dapat immune ka lang sa mga acts na acts na nag-arise sa official function mo. So, wala namang relation yung Uh, defamation sa trabaho niya bilang economist ng ADP. Let's, ano, find more cases para sa generality principle. Okay. Pwede din itong Gonzales versus Abaya. Kasi dito, um, ito yung awkward thing. Tapos parang may question kung aling, tri- ay, aling tribunal yung mag-hear ng case. Diba? Kasi kinasuhan sila sa civil courts. At the same time, meron kaso sa military tribunal. So, generality principle. Kanino mag-a-apply? Diba? Si, uh, mag-a-apply ba sa kanila yung penal statutes? Like, you know, as yung ng civil courts. I mean, ng civil... Na, pwede ba sa i-prosecute sa civil courts natin? Parang ganon. Pero yung ruling dito ng court is 
yung military tribunal yung mag-hear. Yun yung may jurisdiction. Kasi meron tayong law, yung CA4, CA408, na if the crime is service-connected, and the president in the interest of justice did not order the case to be tried in civil courts instead, then ya absorb yung crimes nila tapos isasama siya dun sa violations for the articles articles of war and dun siya i-hear sa military tribunal, hindi sa civil courts. So, gano'n. Okay, so let's move on to territoriality principle. Basta sa general, generality principle, um, sinasabi na lahat ng tao uh, na nandito, okay, medyo confusing siya dun sa territoriality pero may difference yan. So generality kasi, parang equal protection clause, parang ganon yung concept na parang lahat kayo uh, ititreat the same. Mag-apply sa inyong lahat regardless of sino ka pa yung pinalos. Okay? Basta nandito ka sa Pilipinas. Ganyan. Sa territoriality principle naman, ano siya, um, yung criminal laws uh, punish crimes committed within the Philippine territory. So it looks more into the territory kung saan saan na-commit yung crime and sa an enfor- na at na enforceable so parang limitation din siya at na enforceable yung criminal laws natin within lang sa territory natin okay pero meron yang exceptions may tinatawag na extra territoriality so nasa ano yan nasa article 2 of the revised penal code so extra territoriality ibig sabihin extra you go beyond the philippine territory so yun yung exception sa uh territoriality principle. So, sinasabi na, um, according sa Article 2, that um, if the crime is committed while on a Philippine ship or airship, ba, yung ibibase mo yung nationality kung Philippine ship or airship siya sa registration ng vessel. And, um, if committed sa Philippine waters or high seas. Diba? Yun. Kapag committed sa Philippine water or high seas and Philippine ship or airship siya, yung registration ng vessel, yun yung nationality ng vessel, then kahit wala siya sa isla, diba? kahit nasa dagat siya, yung ship at airship na yun, parang extension of our territory, applicable sa kanya, yung pinalos natin. So, yung mga nangyayari doon, uh, pwedeng itry sa Philippine courts, applying Philippine penal statutes. Or, again, laws that involve public security, public order, ganyan. If naman, yung Philippine ship or airship natin napadpad na sa territory ng ibang bansa, uh, hindi ito mag apply Kasi kailangan natin i-respect din yung territory ng ibang bansa. Again, no state is uh, above above other states. Ba? Equal yan silang lahat. So, mag apply lang tong commission on offense while on a Philippine ship or airship if two requisites. Yung registration ng vessel Philippine, Filipino, Philippine registration. Okay? It carries the Philippine flag. And if the crime is committed while the ship is oh, while the ship is on on ba or in anong mas tamang preposition while the ship is in in the philippine seas or philippine waters or the high seas meaning yung yung high seas is uh yun yung mga dagat like pacific ocean yung walang hindi part ng territory ng any state like for everybody diba so yeah Next is, so Article 2 is if um, the crime is forging or counterfeiting any coin or currency note of the Philippines or obligations and securities issued by the Philippine government. So regardless of where you are, kahit nasa territory ka pa ng ibang state, okay, uh, basta ito yung crime na kinomit mo, 
it can be tried in Philippine courts applying Philippine penal laws. So sa atin pinipinalize yan, therefore liable yung mga taong yan. Regardless kung sino pa nag-commit, whether Filipino yung nag-commit or hindi, whether nasa soil sila ng ibang state or hindi, di ba? whether nasa ship sila or airship na yung flag hindi sa Philippines or hindi nakaregister yung vessel sa Philipp- as a uh, Philippine vessel. So wala na, wala. Walang pake kahit saan ka pa. As long as yung crime is forging or counterfeiting any coin or currency note of the Philippines or obligations and securities issued by the Republic of the Philippines. Same with the introduction into the Philippines of these counterfeit or forged coin or currency or obligation and securities that are issued by the Republic of the Philippines. Pag pinasok mo, kung nalang ginawa mo sa ibang bansa, kinounterfeit mo doon, tapos iba yung kung nalang nagcounterfeit doon, tapos merong iba rin na tao na nagpasok dito, both sila liable. Yung, gum, yung nagcounterfeit and nagforge doon sa ibang bansa, okay, liable siya because of the paragraph 2, which is forging or counterfeiting. Yung isa naman na nag-introduce, another person, liable din siya. Hindi lang yun yung liable, pati siya. Pero, it's because of paragraph 3. Next is, um, liable pa rin yung mga public officers or employees who commit an offense in the exercise of their functions, Philippine uh, public of- officers or employees of the Philippine government tawa. In the exercise of their public functions, kahit sa ibang bansa nila i-commit ito. Like, for example, uh, malversation or plunder, mga ganon. If, like, an element of the crime is committed outside of the country or, um, alam mo yun, uh, mga crimes na they commit outside of the Philippine territory dahil public officers sila or employees of the Philippine government regardless of where they are. If they commit an offense in the exercise of their functions, they shall be liable here in our Philippine courts and the RPC and their S and their SPLs or the special penal laws shall apply to them as well. Uh, and lastly, commission of any crime against national security in the law of nations as defined in Title One of Book Two of the Revised Penal Code, such as treason, ganyan. So, ayun. Also, piracy, actually. Pero yung piracy kasi, kasama ba yung Title 1? Eh, or Special Penal Law yan. But, as long as you commit a crime that involves, uh, or that threatens the national security of the Philippines and the law of nations, such as piracy, okay? So, in piracy kasi, ano yan eh, against the uh, law of nations, a crime against humanity and eh. ano pa a violations of the human security act okay that's not in the rpc but if you commit it outside no, that that's that crime like trafficking like human trafficking and, and drug trafficking ganyan um you're still liable if you commit such crimes even outside philippine territory so what is the warship rule a warship of another country, even though docked in the Philippines, <coughs> is considered as an extension of the territory of the respective country. Okay. Same din sa atin. Kasi it carries the flag of the state. Eh. So it's an extension of the of the territory of that state. So, paano natin masasabi that a vessel again is... Uh, a Philippine vessel or an aircraft uh, if it's registered again as a Philippine vessel or aircraft. So if it's a vessel with a marina, if it's an aircraft with a cab or civil aeronautics board. Okay. Foreign merchant vessel naman, ibang treatment sa warships. Okay. So, the merchant vessels, again, in registration, very important kung ano yung registration niya. 
So, para siyang extension of the country to which it belongs. Yung warship naman, yung foreign merchant vessels, ito yung register mo sa marina and sa camp. Yung warships naman, official vessels of the president yan. And extension of territory and sovereignty. So, hindi mo kailangan i-register dyan sa marina. register sa marina at um, sa official warship natin yan. That's an extension of our territory. So, if a crime is committed on the warships, then uh, yung nationality of the warship yun yung magdetermine if sino yung may jurisdiction. So, if Philippine warship yan, ito pa tayo sa legion sa loob ng Philippine warship. But of course, it's tribal in Philippine courts. And not just, you know, tribal, but our laws will apply. The Philippine penal laws will apply to such warships. Kahit saan pa yung nakadungka. Okay. Sa merchant vessels naman kasi, kapag ka sa Philippine waters lang or high seas. Kapag yan, nasa territory na ng ibang bansa, pag merchant vessel, wala na. Kapag ka foreign warship naman, or kapag warship natin, nasa ibang bansa, meron pa rin tayong kapoy. So, the French rule, also known as the flag state principle, crimes committed aboard a foreign merchant vessel within the territorial waters of the Philippines are subject to the jurisdiction of the flag state unless their commission affects the peace and security of our country. This French rule does not apply to us. Kasi yung sa atin, um, may habo lang tayo if nasa waters natin sila or nasa high seas. Yung view ng Philippines is kapag ka yung merchant vessel nasa territory na ng another state, yung state na yon yung yung state, yung, ter- yung may-ari ng territory na yon na state, yun yung may jurisdiction. And yung laws niya, yung mag apply doon. English rule, coastal state principle, com- crimes committed aboard a foreign merchant vessel within the territorial water of the Philippines, coastal state, are subject to the jurisdiction of the Philippines unless their commission does not affect the peace and security of our country or has no pernicious effect therein. So, regardless yan, kahit na foreign merchant vessel yan, pag nakapasok na sa, sa Philippine territory yan, um, pag merchant vessel, meron tayong jurisdiction dyan and mag apply yung rules or yung laws natin, yung penal laws natin dyan, okay, sa foreign merchant vessel na yan. So, baliktad siya nung sa French rule. So, mas ina-adapt natin yung English rule. However, um, parang obsolete na to kasi unclosed na eh. Meron ng Convention of the Long Sea and yung Philippines yung pinafollow niya. Uh, kasi signatory yung unclosed. Ah, signatory yung Philippines sa unclosed. So, yun yung magpaprevail. Hindi yung mga English sa French rule. Pero, you know, English rule, yun yung susunod natin. Pero, Convention of the Long Sea yun talaga, yung pinafollow natin. Okay. So, parang same lang siya sa English rule eh. Okay. Extraterritoriality, again, yun nga, outside the Philippine territory, meron tayong reach doon. So, yung sa, ano, public officers or employees who commit an offense in the exercise of their public functions, uh, pwede silang liable kahit saan sa mundo for crimes like direct bribery, indirect bribery, qualified bribery, failure to render accounts, failure to render an account before leaving the country, illegal use of public funds or property, failure to make delivery of public funds or property, falsification, fraud against public treasury and similar offenses, malversation of public funds or property, and possession prohibited interest. Pero this is not an exclusive list, meaning uh, hindi lang limited sa mga crimes. So they can be held liable for other crimes as long as it's in pursuance of their uh, official functions.
Sa Commission of Any Crimes Against National Security and Law of Nations naman, example are, you know, as defined in Title I of Book 2 of the RPC, treason, conspiracy, and proposal to commit treason, misprision of treason, espionage, inciting to war and giving motives for reprisals, violation of neutrality, correspondence with hostile country, flight to enemy's country, piracy and mutiny in the high seas, qualified piracy, and terrorism. And uh, rebellion is excluded because it's not because it's not a crime against national security and love nations. Rebellion is a crime against public order. Violations of the Human Security Act of 2007, okay, regardless where it is committed, liable pa din yung mga offenders or mga violators. So, the act shall apply to individual persons who, kahit outside of the Philippines, conspire or plot to commit okay, violations of the Human Security Act of 2007 or commit crimes on board Philippine ship or airship or sa embassy, consulate, diplomatic premises belonging to or occupied by the Philippine government in an official capacity. Uh, commit said crimes against Philippine citizens or persons of Philippine descent kahit abroad where their citizenship or ethnicity was a factor in the commission of the crime. So, kung nara, may genocide sila doon sa ibang bansa. Tapos patay nila na itong pinag doon. This is a violation of the Human Security Act. Commit said crimes directly against the Philippine government. Also, violations of Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. This Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020 uh, repealed Human Security Act of 2007. Basically, parang same pa din naman, pero mga additions lang. Uh, ito na. So, na-repeal na niya. Itong 2020. And, um, it shall apply, or our laws shall apply, criminal laws shall apply to Filipino citizens or nationals who commit the acts, you know, as really mentioned, same thing as the Human Security Act, even outside the territorial jurisdiction of the Philippines, and individual persons who uh, commit crimes inside the territorial limits of the Philippines or on board Philippine ship or airship, or again, sa embassy, consulate, diplomatic premises belong to or occupied by the Philippine government in official capacity against Philippine citizens. Philippine citizens or persons of Philippine descent, okay, same lang, directly against the Philippine government. Same lang. Para in-update lang nila yung mga na to to make it more relevant. Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2003. So, this is also punishable. The violations of this act is, all, is also punishable regardless of where the offenders are. So, embassy. Embassy grounds are considered as extensions of the sovereignty of the country occupying them. So, yung U.S. Embassy, kahit nasa Philippine soil yan, uh, they have jurisdiction for crimes committed in there. The same way that uh, Philippine, we have jurisdiction for crimes committed within the Philippine Embassy, regardless of where that embassy is. So, Sa ibang bansa kasi may mga Philippine embassies din. It's considered as Philippine soil extension. Okay. So what is forging or counterfeiting? Let's go back. No. It's uh it's committed by giving a treasury or banknote or any instrument payable to bearer or to order. So securities na. The appearance of a true genuine document. So, pineke mo or like, uh, yun nga, parang kinopya mo, hindi siya yung urig, di ba? Counterfeit nga eh. So, by, either by um, erasing or substituting or counterfeiting or altering, okay, figures, letters, words, or signs contained therein. So, pag, pag tinampar mo, okay, that's forging or counterfeiting. So, the same with obligations and securities, 
when you say intraterritoriality naman, what is this? The RPC is made applicable within the Philippine archipelago. Okay? So that includes the Philippine soil, the atmosphere, the interior waters, the maritime zone. Okay? So yun. Kabalik tara ng extraterritoriality. So within naman yung intra. With, uh, without. <laughs> Outside naman pag extraterritoriality. Okay. So let's discuss this case of Del Socorro versus Van Wilson. Ano to eh? Um, Pinay nag-asawa ng taga-Netherlands. Tapos they had a child. Tapos, you know, the marriage turned sour. So, the wife or the Pinay went back to the Philippines with, you know, their common child, their son. Tapos, nag-promise ng support, hindi nagbigay ng support. Later, yung uh, taga-Netherlands na napangasawa ni Pinay, umuwi sa Pilipinas, pero hindi pa rin nag-support. Instead, sumama sa another Pinay. Okay. Tapos ngayon, itong, itong si first Pinay wife, uh, I'm not sure if nag-divorce sila, pero regardless. No? Nag-send ng demand letter for support para sa common child nila dun sa taga-Netherlands, pero ayaw magbigay. Yung sabi kasi ng taga-Netherlands na to na, well, sa amin kasi sa Netherlands, we're not required to give child support, parang ganon. However, he was not able to back this up. No? And uh, apart from not being able to back this up, uh, yung territoriality principle, kasi nandito siya sa Pilipinas, eh. nag-sojourn siya dito. So, nag-a-apply yung uh, criminal law sa atin sa kanila. So, just, you know, the violation of RE 9262. So, kahit na bawal, kahit na uh, hindi bawal sa kanila, which is hindi naman yan approve, diba? um, liable siya dito for um, a violation of the vow C. Kasi, ano yun eh, uh, abuse yung deprivation and denial of financial support to the child. And itong people versus tulin, ito eh, sa virus ito, merong isa kasi dito na sinasabi niya ang nasa ano siya, Singapore siya eh. So, hindi siya liable kasi outside na ng Philippines nung kinumit niya yung crime of piracy. But then again, no. Um, it's piracy is uh, an exception to the rule of territoriality kasi crime against humanity to eh, yung piracy so pwede pa rin try people versus lolo uh, piracy din to uh, reiterates lang that piracy is a crime against mankind. Okay, AAA versus BBB. This is an interesting case, actually. Maganda yung doctrine nito, eh. Uh, bale, both sila Filipino citizens, pero yung lalaki nagtrabaho sa Singapore as chef. So yung babae, flight attendant, tapos meron silang anak. Tapos, itong si lalaki ng babae naghanap ng bagong kinakasama na parang Singaporean doon sa Singapore. Tapos, hindi na nagbibigay ng support. And, may mga violations of policy na ina dito kasi uh, meron daw abandonment, mistreatment, uh, physical and sexual violence, ganon. So, yun. Uh, merong psychological abuse, may ganun pa. So, sabi nung, ano, nung lalaki na, well, hindi naman, lahat ng yan, ng mga ina-allege mo sa akin, hindi naman nangyari sa uh, Pilipinas. So, wala na daw. Kasi dapat, yung territorial principle yung ina-invoke. Pero yung violation sa pausik kasama dito, yung 
inaalege ni girl is psychological abuse and psychological abuse psychological violence so kinumit siya sa Singapore but then again dala-dala pa rin niya yung elements ngayon sa umuwi siya sa Pilipinas kasi yung psychological violence transitory offense siya or continuing crime so yung, basta may mga elements siya na nandito sa Pilipinas kahit yung ibang elements abroad triable pa sa Philippine courts and the last principle kasi medyo pagod na ako <laughs> uh, perspective principle I don't know how my professors do it or how um, the bar review lecturers do it like they explain and they talk for hours and hours ba? Hindi, hindi bago sa law school 2 to 4 hours na klase grabe din yung resistensya nila mad respect for for my professors uh, and uh, for the bar review lectures um, part of my notes uh, come from jurist bar review center hindi ko inaano ah, like there's no violation ah, i'm not taking material from jurist and then ano it's ano uh, the notes are my own notes no and well, heavily based sa San Beda syllabus, which is different from the from the 2023 uh, jurist bar review uh, syllabus. Kasi yung sa kanila, yung sa bar syllabus, obviously, um, I'm, I'm not. It's just that uh, I I enrolled sa program and then uh, some of my, the way I process, no? some of the, some of the information, syempre I learned from the bar Hindi naman learn for the first time. Of course, it's it's a bar review. Of course, I first heard it in law school already, and you know, the law is there for everybody. Um, ayon like mad respect for all of them, including my professors in San Beda, for you know the patience and the endurance to talk for hours. Ayun. Anyway, um, perspective principle, as mentioned in the first episode, criminal law merely punishes crimes committed on or after its effectivity. Pero again, as discussed, hindi bawal ang retroactive application. Basta hindi siya prejudicial to the accused. Okay. But as a general rule, perspective yung application. Uh, Pwede retroactive, basta favorable siya sa accused, or nade-decriminalize yung isang act. Like, crime siya dati, tapos nag-decide ko, kesa huwag na natin gawin crime. Let's legalize that. Parang maraming. So, for example, um, kung, kung ngayon, uh, bawal magmariwana, diba sa ibang countries, uh, okay lang magmariwana, should the uh, Congress decide na pwede na rin magmariwana dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? So, uh, ayun, parang meron siyang retroactive application na kasi it decriminalizes a certain act that was criminalized before. So, for as long as a penal law is favorable to the accused, it shall find application regardless of whether its effectivity comes after the time when the judgment of conviction is rendered and even if the service of sentence is already begun. So the accused shall be entitled to the benefits of the new law, warranting him to serve a lesser sentence or to his release. If he has already begun serving his previous sentence and said service already accomplished the term of the modified sentence. Penal laws are laws which, while not penal in nature, have provisions defining offenses and prescribing penalties for their violation. While RA number 10592 does not define a crime or provide a penalty as it addresses the rehabilitation component of our correctional system, its provisions have the purpose and effect of diminishing the punishment attached to the crime. So, exceptions to the exceptions. If habitual delinquent, however, 
So, hindi mag-work sa favor nito. So, who are habitual delinquents ba? A habitual delinquent is a person which shall be that a person that is uh, rather uh, a habitual delinquent a person shall be deemed a habitual delinquent if within a period of 10 years from the date of his release after you serve the sentence or last conviction of uh, of the following crimes serious or less serious physical injuries robbery theft estafa okay. wait lang i-update pa ng notes ko serious serious physical injuries robbery theft estafa or falsification okay exclusive list he's found guilty of any said of any said crimes a third time or oftener within the period of 10 years, then habitual delinquent yan siya. So, hindi mag a hindi siya magbe-benefit dito sa um, retroactive application na favorable to the accused. Sino pa yung mga bawal? Recidivist. Yes. Okay. Yung recidivist naman, ano, no, 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 habitual delinquent lang. Mamaya natin discuss yung recidivist. Okay. But, okay, fine. Since nandito nandito naman tayo. Yung recidivist naman is one who, at the time of his trial, for one crime, shall have been previously convicted by final judgment of another crime embraced naman sa same title of the RPC. Pero ito, hindi siya kasama dito sa exceptions na sinasabi natin tukul sa retroactivity. Ano to? Titrated as an aggravating circumstance. Okay? Uh, na nag increase ng penalty. So, later na ito sa aggravating circumstance sa topic. Okay, sa recidivism naman, hindi ma-offset ng mitigating circumstance. Kasi kapag ordinary lang, may like recidivism lang, ano na yan? Dadagdag ka ng aggravating circumstance as may mitigating circumstance plus minus plus minus. Uh, pag, pag ano naman, pag special aggravating circumstance, hindi siya na-offset. So, kailangan talagang taasad. Hindi siya magpa-plus minus, plus minus. E plus minus mo yung ibang ordinary, pero not a special. So, hindi siya ma-offset ang ordinary mitigating circumstance. So, yung quasi-recidivist naman, uh, offender must have been previously convicted by final judgment and before beginning to serve such sentence or while serving the same the conviction of penalty. Ayan. So, another exception dun sa habitual delinquents na hindi, hindi sila kasama. Yung habitual delinquents na hindi mag-benefit sa retroactive application na favorable to the accused. Another is if it is made, kapag yung law mismo na nagsasabing meron siyang retroactive application na favorable to the accused, Sinabi dun sa law that um, it will not have a retroactive effect. If, if express siya na, na nagsasabi na walang retroactive effect. Okay. So, bawal. Kasi yun yung ano ng Congress eh. Yung intention ng Congress. Self-repealing law is one where the law expires on its own terms and provisions. The, expi- the expiration of a self-repealing law has the same legal effect as an absolute repeal. Amendment of penal law shall be given a prospective effect, but if the amendatory laws are favorable to the accused, I said in subject here, the payment of seven, are favorable to the accused, who is not a habitual delinquent, the same shall be given retroactive effect. If the repeal makes the penalty lighter in the new law, then the new law shall be applied. Kahit meron pang retroactive application yan. Kasi yun yung mas favorable sa accused eh. Except when the offender is again a habitual delinquent or yung second exception was mentioned before, the law states that it's not applicable. If the new law imposes a heavier penalty, then the law enforced at the time of the commission of the offense before the new law 
shall be applied kasi yun yung mas favorable sa accused. If the new law uh, totally repeals the existing law and, and the act which was penalized under the old law is no longer punishable and the offense ceases to be criminal, then yung nagde-decriminalize, yun yung mag-a-ha. So, yun yung law. Okay. Update ko lang yung notes ko. So, if the new law and the old law penalize the same offense, depende kung ano mas favorable sa kanya, can be tried under the old law. If the repealing law penalizes the, penalizes, or penalizes, penalizes, okay, penalizes the same act punished by the repealed law, the court retains the authority to try and sentence the accused under the old law or the existing, or the law existing at the time of the commission. Same lang naman. So, walang change na kailangan. If the same act is punished by both the repealing and the repealed law and the penalty provided in the new law is lighter, then, yun yung mag-a-apply sa kanya. Yung lighter penalty. Again, very basic lang naman. Always, kung anong mas favorable sa accused provided na hindi siya habitual delinquent and uh, hindi expressly prohibited or Walang nakasabi dun sa new law na hindi siya mag apply If the repealing law fails to penalize the offense under the old law, then, walang conviction. Diba? Kasi na-decriminalize, yun yung favorable sa accused. If a new law omits anything contained in the old law dealing the same subject, then it operates as a repeal of anything not so included in the amendatory act. If the criminal case is still pending in court and the crime was obliterated, okay, na decriminalized na, the case shall be, wow, dismissed. Since the court loses jurisdiction to try and decide it in view of the obliteration of the offense from the statute books. Di pa rin i-apply yung dating law. Wala nang legal basis to convict him or prosecute him. If the criminal case is not yet filed in court, it can no longer be filed kasi wala nang crime. Diba? So, there's this Spanish doctrine, Fe- favora, fab- favorabilia sunt amplianda adiosa restringenda principle. I don't know if I said that right, but at least I tried. <laughs> Um, it is a principle that the pe- that penal laws which are favorable to the accused are given retroactive effect. So, yun. Gosh. Finally, we finished that chunk in characteristics of criminal law. So, again, to some uh, characteristics. It's general, it's territorial, and it's perspective. So, generality principle, there are exceptions. Yun yung mga granted uh, diplomatic immunity or yung restriction na kailangan in the exercise of public functions. Hindi lang ito nag-a-apply, hindi yung exception hindi lang sa foreign uh, heads of state or ambassadors, you know, that, that, that list. Also to our own officials, you know, public officers like the president, for example, cannot be sued by virtue of constitution. Um, members of Congress, diba? and uh, the justice of the su- uh, the chief justice of the Supreme Court, mga immunity and sila because of the Constitution, which is higher than the RPC. Tapos ano pa? Um, kahit wala ka dun sa exclusive list of uh, those persons granted diplomatic immunity, if uh, you know the Scalzo case. If uh, you are acting at the behest of, you know, the sending state, 
so you're representing the state you're acting you know like the state if that makes sense uh ayun um pwedeng state immunity from suit yung ano yung i-invoke like case ka so hindi siya kinakasukan ano pa uh, generality so yun yun naman importante uh, territoriality naman yung extra territoriality yun yung exception so nandun sa article 2 kung ano so memorize yun dapat like airship counterfeit forging, introduction of the counterfeit or forged coin currency or obligation of security issued by the government. What else? Um, uh, crimes committed by public uh, officials or employees in their executive, you know, in their official functions even outside of the country. Uh, violations of uh, Title 1, Book 1 of Title 1, Book 2 of the RPC yun yung mga crimes against national security uh, like treason uh, mga ganyan uh, what else uh, crimes against the law of nations or crimes against humanity such as piracy uh, special penal laws such as na repealing human security act so may anti-terrorism act now 2020 so yun ano pa trafficking law against illegal trafficking. It's yung case AA versus BBB very important. It was about psychological violence getting elements lang. Uh, may isang element lang dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, Triable pa rin sa Philippine courts. And perspectivity. Uh, general rule perspective yung mga pinalos natin. However, uh, pwedeng retroactive effect as long as favorable to the accused. Okay, pag may mga pag may differences dun sa new law at sa old law or sa, sa repealing law at repealed law kung ano pa rin yung favorable sa accused whether new law man yan or yung repealing law man yan or repealed law okay, yun yung mag apply So, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the next episode. Wow. Episode. It's still not used to it. Uh, I'll be discussing felonies naman. Just the same thing as felonies and uh, criminal liability. Yun na yung uh, imputability doctrine elements of felonies, classification of crimes, yung penalties, yun some cases, probably conspiracy then, criminal intent, uh, understanding. So again, I'm basing it sa San Beda syllabus. Culpable felonies, a mistake of fact, mistake of law, you know, that like the lab that is Ahachong, Puminis, Wanis, Harry, again, then, Federation Ictus, Paper Intention, and more than one. So, would you know that again? Proximate cause, yeah, the next, the next video will be very low. Ito din yung pacing namin sa San Bede. Eh. possible times. Uh, for example, yung general principles, parang one week yan. And then, yung next naman, yung characteristics of general, parang one week din. Yung one week composed of like two meetings. And yan. So, doon na naman yung pacing. Sorry if, I, if, if this is taking a while, but I hope that uh, 
um, I hope that you find this video helpful somehow. So yeah, thank you.